Joe. Joe is a new recruit in the United States Army. And like any dutiful American, he wishes to serve his country by shooting up the bad guys. Do we throw Joe on the front lines and hope he figures it out himself? Mother! Nonsense. That would be a waste of a perfectly good suit of power armor. Through the use of taxpayer money and with the aid from what the eggheads are calling virtual reality, Joe can break the chains of his physical form and experience war from the comfort of a cozy pod. Into the pod steps a starry-eyed American and out comes a killing machine, a defender of liberty, a guardian of democracy. Now Joe's a true American hero, and you can be too. Enlist in the United States Army and experience virtual reality today. Edna, begin recording. The Mojave has had to worry about slavers from the Legion capturing folk. But at least when you're grabbed by the Legion, you know where you're heading. Out east in the capital wasteland, there are plenty of slavers. But it seems like there aren't many slaves around. People always wonder what happens to the unfortunates who get nabbed. But it turns out that the slavers in Paradise Falls are in the export business. When they capture someone, they usually aren't sold locally. They get shipped north to a place aptly named the Pit. Before the war, the Pit was called Pittsburgh in the Eastern Commonwealth. The Pittsburgh Chamber of Commerce produced some interactive holotapes to draw in tourists and show off its thriving steel industry. This is what it looked like in the late 21st century. There aren't many records of what the city was like in the years following the Great War. No reliable sources entered the pit until about 30 years ago, when a Brotherhood of Steel chapter led by Paladin Lyons passed through on their mission to explore the East Coast. When they arrived, it looked more like this. While the West Coast was slowly marching back towards civilization, Pittsburgh had spent 180 years degenerating into a genetic swamp with barely human mutants cannibalizing each other. Different parts of the wasteland get their own local flavor. In the pit, the unique combination of radioactive runoff and industrial waste brought about what they call troglodyte degeneration condition. Anyone who stays in the pit will start to develop it after a few weeks. Most people just get a case of ghouly looking skin, but many lose their higher cognitive abilities eventually. The most unfortunate folk devolve one step further and lose their humanity altogether. These trogs, as they call them, crawl around naked on all fours and shun humanity in favor of the shadows. When the Brotherhood of Steel traveled through the pit in 2255, Elder Lyons couldn't stand seeing humanity reduced to such a state. So he and his followers annihilated most of the cannibals, the raiders, and mutants. Run! 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 Firing! Brotherhood called it the Scourge. They brought fire and brimstone to hell, sacked the city, and took what unmutated children they found with them to Washington, D.C. A few of those pit kids are now full members of the Brotherhood's capital chapter. The Brotherhood also left someone behind in the pit, a paladin who had been wounded and trapped during the Scourge, Ishmael Asher. Paladin Asher was a local brother at one point, but when awoke surrounded by raiders in the ruins of the pit, he saw a city that held promise. Pittsburgh had once been called the City of Steel, and Asher knew that the secrets of steel would let the wasteland rebuild America's railways. Noble goals indeed, but the business of forging iron ore into girders of steel is hard work. Hard even during the height of civilization, and even worse now. Given that people who spend more than a few weeks in the pit end up turning into troglodytes, it's not surprising that there weren't many volunteers. The dwindling population of the pit had to be inflated with slaves, so Asher has been importing his labor force from the capital wasteland. Slaves need a motivation, a reason to not just lie down and let the trogs tear their throats out. For the slaves in the pit, their hope is the whole, a combat arena where the brave can try to prove themselves worthy of freedom by brawling in a crater filled with radioactive sludge. 
survive three rounds against the most bloodthirsty people in the pit, you're free to go with an offer of joining Asher's army. The gentleman's art of boxing has no place in the hole. Slaves fight with anything they can get their hands on, from mining equipment to laser scatter guns. One person even won their freedom using a board with a nail in it. Very few people actually make it out of the pit, though. One person fought their way free through the hole and showed up in the capital wasteland a few years ago, carrying holotapes that were supposedly recorded by Paladin Asher himself. If it's really him, it seems that he had been trying to find a cure for the trog condition, yet more noble aspirations from a slave owner. Folk who want to see how things turned out can take a hand truck there from Northern Maryland. The rails go all the way up to the pit. No matter your opinion on slave owning, that's quite a feat of engineering and a testament to the potential of Asher's vision of a reborn world. There's a chance that future generations will actually restore the railways that once connected both coasts of this continent. Getting across the oceans is another story. A few folk with funny accents claim that they're from overseas, but ships that can navigate the water spouts and sea critters are nearly impossible to find. There's a fella who says his old paddle boat could travel up and down the Atlantic coast, but the farthest anyone has ever gone and returned is a swamp a little ways to the south. It's a place of mysteries and ancient magics, or at least that's what you'll hear from the few tourists who've been there and back. But that is a story for another day.